Hi, my name is Heather Richmond. Welcome to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well. And as always, thank you to those of you who have taken the time to share my work, to reach out, make comments, ask questions. Those things are always appreciated. So this is part three in my series, You Are the Bridge. And essentially by bridge, I mean that you in your current state of consciousness are the conduit between, we might say, spirit and matter or God and man. So in being that conduit, we might say also that we are the mother. And as I explained in part one, as in our role as the mother, we are taking the sun, which is humanity and our lower aspects, up to the light of awareness, which is the father or God. But of course, we're all one with God, you know, um, just in this current state of our journey, uh, those of you who are tuned into this frequency of reality are currently in this stage of navigating the two worlds, essentially. And so in part one, I went, went in more detail about how um, that can affect us on, you know, more of a practical level, as well as our role on a greater level of you know, non-physicality. In part two, I discussed that much of our role concerns lifting up humanity. So lifting up our brothers and sisters, which is, of course, indeed lifting up ourselves to that light of awareness, to God, in order to merge all three of them, or we might say work toward fusion of all three minds. So <clears throat> here in part three, I'm going to discuss um, another element that I believe is very important in this journey at this time. And um, I'm guessing that many of you are feeling this sort of like push and pull. And so my hope is that um, this message will bring you some degree of comfort and will help encourage you as, again, you are navigating these, these two worlds, which I know very well can be sort of exhausting. So I will just go ahead and jump in and I'm going to read my post from Patreon. Uh, I posted it on Patreon as well as Facebook. Um, I always strive to make my post on Patreon public because I never want money to be a barrier to anyone accessing information. So I'll give that link, and if you feel called to, definitely check that out, and a subscription is not necessary, but if you feel called to, that would be fantastic. So um, I will read and provide any commentary as needed. Anytime we fall into a state of fear... It is because we have forgotten that we are the animator of our own experience. It does not matter what the external circumstances may appear to be. There is never an enemy coming from the outside to oppose us. There is no person, being, or group that is more powerful than the Creator I am. So I know that many of us who are embarking upon this stage in our journey um, do sometimes find ourselves falling into that state of fear. <clears throat> I know that I do for sure. Um, and it is, you know, those experiences of, it, of having fear have become fewer and farther in between as time goes on, but it is a continuous, um, it's a, it, it involves a continuous 
conscious direction of your awareness. And it requires also a lot of reminders. I have, um, index cards that I write on constantly. Sometimes I'll have as many as, you know, eight or 10 in a day that, um, you know, contain information that comes to me from within, because of course we know that it, it truly is all within. Um, but just to the act of writing it down, the act of seeing it, reading it, and then even speaking it aloud can truly go a long way to, you know, helping those reminders to crystallize. And I would encourage you, if you are falling into fear on a, a regular basis, one thing that's been helpful to me is to look back in time, because we know that time is helpful for measuring movement. So look back in time and see the progress that you've made and celebrate that progress. Um, It may sometimes feel like, you know, we're just kind of running in a loop and, you know, we're falling into fear, getting out of it falling back into it, getting out of it. But if you look back over the course, you know, say, look back even six months ago and think about where you were in your consciousness at that time. Look back a year ago and I can just about guarantee you that you have made substantial movement. You may not be exactly where you want to be. I know that I'm not. Um, but you know, it truly is a, it's a process and it's something that cannot happen overnight because we, we honestly just could not withstand it all at once. So, um, so again, be patient with yourself, be patient with others and your reality as well. All right. Any perceived external opposition is a reflection of internal opposition this is our consciousness made visible. As Neville says, um, he phrases it as uh, our world is ourselves pushed out. And in, you know, as time goes on, you see that more and more. It really is true. <clears throat> so when anything on the outside happens before reacting, we should look on the inside and examine our state of being. If the experience is undesired, we can change it simply by changing our perspective. Truly, this world is a mirror which shows you who you are. If there is chaos on the outside, it is only because there is chaos on the inside. If there is harmony without, it is being projected from within. We become confused because it sometimes shows us parts of ourselves that have not yet been made conscious. So, we don't recognize it for what it really is. So, I often write and speak a lot about the fact that, you know, I I know that there is a narrative in the spiritual community about, um, I'm very well versed and familiar with, you know, these ideas of, um, you know, external oppression and opposition and, you know, what we might call the reptilian agenda, things of that nature. Um, I, I, fully understand that. And I do believe that that is a process, having those beliefs in a, in an external enemy. It's, it's part of the process of awakening. And hopefully, you know, we are able to move through that phase pretty quickly. And even if we don't necessarily subscribe to an idea of, you know, this group that's oppressing us or, you know, any nefarious beings, that sort of thing, you may still find yourself in situations where you are inadvertently giving power to other 
people in your reality, whether that be, you know, say a romantic partner, a family member, a friend, whomever. Um, or one of the more common things that I see is, you know, people giving power to, um, specific teachers or, um, you know, uh, con, uh, intermediaries, people that, you know, claim to be healers, things of that nature. Uh, truly, these, these people can help awaken memory, but we know that it really is all within. So the halo, or we might call it the corona or the aura, is our emanation a toroidal field that we project through our consciousness, or it might be more accurate to say we project it from our consciousness. We can choose to create a world of disease and despair or one of health and harmony. Your emanation is Christ, the field of light that has always surrounded you because it is from you. We are literally inseparable from anything in our world. We are the cause of it, the creator, the animator of all life. And this realization really, truly does um, provide further clarity on who you truly are and what this experience is about. So, um, I spoke more at length about this idea of Christ, or it's, um, referred to by some as David person. That's the personification in scripture. I spoke more about that idea in part two, if you are interested in knowing more about that. Undesired. Oh, I'm going to back up just a tad here. Uh, I did not put this in my article, but this came to me later and I wanted to go ahead and mention this idea as well. So I, I spoke just a second ago about how, um, you know, our, we have our own emanation. It's a field of light that we are projecting from our consciousness. So one thing that happens in, um, addiction, addictive patterns of behavior, which we, I'm not speaking necessarily, uh, or just about, you know, things that we consider to be negative, like alcohol, drugs, sex, think, you know, whatever. Um, I'm sp this whole experience has been about, um, ex you know, having those addictions, or we might say conditions, conditioned behaviors, and then waking up from that, from that hold that addiction has over us. So one thing that came to me in relation to um, the fact that we all are the, the center point of our um, projection of reality is this idea that um, addiction really is the unconscious recreation of experiences. So that means essentially Say, for example, something bad happens to you. Say, you know, your romantic partner breaks up with you, for example. The more that we keep replaying that in the eye of the mind, the more that we are guaranteed to continue reprojecting those, those same situations. So, um, one example that comes to mind that, that people frequently cite is this idea of, um, drawing in, you know, people that someone that we might consider to be or label as a narcissist. And many of us on this journey will, um, you know, go through those patterns where we call in the same type of person and, it, it takes some time, but eventually we realize that these pe the problem is not these people. The problem is us. We are the common denominator. And so, um, you know, if you feel like you have called someone in like that, who is a narcissist or 
is treating you poorly in whatever way, um, shift your, I would encourage you uh, to shift your focus from what that person is doing to what you are thinking about, to what you are dwelling upon. Because I can tell you from firsthand experience, if there is someone like that in your reality who is you know, challenging you in that way, it's for a reason. And eventually it, it will get so bad. It will get so, um, you'll feel like there's so much suffering that happens until you, you pretty much have no choice, but to turn within and examine self and find out the message that this is, you know, trying to convey to you. And I'm a big believer in the fact that we discard no one because we have the potential to rewrite anyone in our reality and revise our interactions with them. All right. Undesired experiences only continue to be made manifest in our reality until we go to the true cause of all effects. So that's what I just spoke about. This leads to repeated cycles of contraction and expansion, suffering and release. After rising above this unconscious looping, however, periods of contraction become more of a choice for the purpose of learning and in the knowing that there is opportunity for expansion in contraction. So what I mean by that is essentially um, you come to see any undesired circumstance in your reality as an opportunity for learning as an opportunity for growth. Um, there may still be times that we experience, you know, feelings of pain and doubt, um, frustration. I know for me personally, my largest source of frustration, largest source of frustration has come because um, I feel like I'm doing all the right things, you know, on the surface level to manifest a certain reality, but, um, you know, it doesn't end up necessarily panning out that way. And when that happens, invariably I am, am guided to move on to the next lesson will, which will uncover some sort of block that I wasn't necessarily seeing and helps me to fix that. So, um, you know, it's not necessarily that you say, oh, I'm going to uh, fall into a contracted state this week and, you know, learn some lessons. It's just things that arise in your reality and it feels a lot less like suffering because we remember that we ultimately are the operant power. We are the ones who have written and are writing this experience for ourselves. And it's all for learning. And additionally of note, any condition that you might, might find yourself in can be changed at any time. We are never stuck with a particular condition. All right. When we have largely worked through these regions of the unconscious, bringing these aspects of self to the light of awareness, we can begin to shift our focus from alchemization of consciousness, meaning that suffering that happens, to the creation of our desired reality. Having finished the foundation of your new house, you can then design it in your image, filling it with your creations wrought with love. So there's there's sort of a transition that takes place um, with that as well. And we, you know, transition from filling our house with creations that have arisen due to fear. And instead, we're able to fill our house with creations stemming from love.
essentially. So my last thought on this here, and again, this, this part also is not in the original article, but I did want to add it um, because this came to me very strongly recently, and I think it might be helpful. So um, part of this journey at this stage is that back and forth sort of, you know, feeling like we're in a, a mental tennis match. And so um, you'll find yourself at times in the state of being the, the lower mind, the ego, the personality self. Because the ego, you know, we're not seeking to destroy it. We're seeking to transform it. And then you'll find, you know, times when you're more in that state of being the, um, the higher mind, the higher self. And so when something happens, when something arises in your consciousness that is self-defeating in some way, uh, one thing that can be helpful is to really just take a step back and observe this thought in a state of neutrality. And the most important thing is to not give this thought feeling, not to give it your emotion or your reaction, because that's going to solidify it in your reality. So this is part of the reason, again, why, you know, we have to work through this fear so that we can begin to see these thoughts of the lower mind as the observer without, you know, again, lending it, you know, uh, the emotion of fear. So it may be helpful for you to very intentionally say, let's say a thought arises that is, you know, painful in some way, like something about the future, a worry or a concern about the future. You can say, this is a thought from my lower mind. It is not wrong, but it is very limited in its perception. From a higher vantage point, I see that there is more than meets the eye. So, you know, essentially just, again, taking a step back and saying, this is a thought that has arisen from the lower mind, but I'm choosing consciously to not align with it. And then, of course, you cultivate thoughts of a, you know, that are more expansive and you can align with those thoughts. So I will leave it there. And I think this is probably the last part in this series. Um, I'm pretty sure. So um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to um, leave those in the description box or excuse me, leave those in the comment section. And thank you so much for listening.